So we realized that in order to get more functionality, more features out of it, we needed to use a MIDI foot controller, which is just a like a foot pedal device that sends out MIDI commands that you could connect to the Beat Buddy and then program what those MIDI commands do. However, so I bought a bunch of MIDI foot controllers and they were all really difficult and annoying to use because you practically needed like a computer science degree to program them to send yeah. the right commands out. Right, like right. when you did program it, you'd need to like put like a little piece of tape above the button and down the command that you <laughs> programmed it. So it was just like a big mess. And I realized, hey, you know, if we design a MIDI foot controller that has a little screen above each button, you don't need to put the tape down. And not only that, you can have multiple functions for that button. You can have one button doing many different things, depending on what it says on the screen. So that allows you to do get a lot more functionality out of the same space, which for a musician who has guitar pedals, space on their pedal board is a very important thing because there's only so many pedals you could fit on your pedal board. And especially traveling musicians, they don't want right. to carry a lot of weight. So right. the smaller the gear, the more portable the gear, the better. So we were able to compress a lot more functionality into a much smaller piece of equipment by using screens on top of the buttons, which no other MIDI controller had done up until that point. So that's how the MIDI Maestro came about. And we created to make it easy to program, we made a smartphone app for iOS and That's Android. Nice. Yeah, that you can just, exactly. So you could just download the, you don't have to look up in the manual, like what's the exact command. You could just search for it and click and it goes right into the button on your MIDI Maestro without much effort. So it brings MIDI controllers into the 21st century, I like to say, because it makes it easier to use, easier to program. So that's how the MIDI Maestro came about. And of course, the MIDI Maestro is compatible with all MIDI capable devices. It's not just usable for the Beat Buddy. It, anything that accepts MIDI commands, you can use the MIDI Maestro with. And so that's uh, that was our next product. And then after that, what, uh, another thing that people kept on asking us was, to make new functionality with uh, loopers, right? Okay. So people were using yeah. the Beat Buddy along with their loopers. And of course you need to have MIDI, you, you need to have the drum machine talking to the looper because when you're recording the loop according to a beat, the loop needs to be the same length as the beat. Otherwise they're gonna go out of sync as they cycle around, right? It needs to be, and it has to be exactly the same length. It can't be off even by like a fraction of a second. Cause right. even if it's off by like a fraction of a second, Every time it cycles around, it goes more and more out of sync. Right. So, which is why people use MIDI sync, the MIDI clock between equipment to keep, keep everything synced up. Now, people were asking for all these new features, like for example, when you change song parts on the Beat Buddy, like you go from verse to chorus with the beat, they wanted it to send a MIDI signal to the looper to change the loop on the looper, because, you know, to change the song part on the looper. But nobody, the loopers weren't really designed to do that. And and they were extremely difficult to use. So I bought a bunch of loopers to test out because people were asking for all these new features. And I realized that I'd never been a looping guy before. Like I was always, as I said, like a singer songwriter right. type. So I'd never really done looping. When I started using loopers to test it for the use with the Beat Buddy, I realized a lot of loopers are very difficult to use and they're not intuitive. And uh, for me personally, one of the biggest challenges was knowing where I was in the loop. Like for example, if you record four measures of a loop and then it's you play it back right especially if it's like just a simple chord progression sometimes you lose track of whether you're in like the second measure or you're in the fourth right. measure right. and that's important to know because where the loop ends will decide if you're like going to stop the loop at the end of the loop right. you have to know how many measures are left or if you right. want to change from one loop to like a different section you need to know where you are in the loop in order to make that musical and none of the loopers really had very good indicators of that and so i realized hey you know why don't we make a looper with a screen on it? Just like your DAW, you can see the waveforms yeah. being recorded in the yeah. tracks. And then when it's playing back, you could actually watch where you are in the loop and makes it a lot easier because you could actually see the music like just like on your DAW. You don't have to mm -hmm. like imagine and keep track. Right. And nobody else was making this. Nobody else was making a, a pedal looper that had any sort of this kind of visual interface like right. your DAW does. Yeah. 